piece of shit whistleblowers. He doesn't deserve those animals. Those animals deserve so much more than he could ever give them. Hey guys, I feel like a lot of you all have been waiting for this video. Now is the time to do it. So here we are. I had reached out on my Instagram and asked you guys uh, for any questions you might have regarding Tiger King 2 and my involvement. And I have a pretty little list, so I am gonna go over it. I need to do a little disclaimer first. This video will have profanity and talks of animal abuse and other horrible things, so just brace yourself. I also want to explain that this video is about my experience. I am not going to speak on behalf of anybody else. I'm going to speak about me, how this affected me, my involvement in this, a partridge in a pear tree. That way, if I receive backlash, at least it is directed towards me and not them. One last thing, I take this very seriously. However, I use a lot of humor and sarcasm to cope with traumatic events. And this whole thing, whole thing since 2015 is just a traumatic event. So just understand that this is a very serious matter to me. I take this seriously. I experienced it firsthand and that the way I cope is the way I cope. So let's get into it, shall we? They're missing how many animals are crying behind closed doors. They're, they're not seeing the moldy food or no food at all. They're not seeing the lack of water. Um, they're not seeing open wounds that aren't being treated. Jordan Jones used to volunteer at Wildlife in Need. How did you all figure out you needed to report him? So again, I'm gonna speak about my experience in particular. Um, I knew I needed to report him after he punched uh, the tiger reticulated python in the face because he did because the snake bit him and the snake bit him because he was moving the snake while she was trying to eat a rabbit and she was hissing and giving warning signs and he was choosing to ignore it and so she struck and she bit him right here he was bleeding everywhere and washed himself up told me to clean up his blood and then went back over, started talking smack to the snake, and then punched her in the face. Yeah. That was just, that was the first time he punched a snake in the face in front of people. I think later he realized, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that in front of four people. There were some signs before then, but that was my, okay, you need to do something. You have to do something. We started talking to whistleblowers five months ago. At that time, they were worried about animal welfare on the property. Today, we checked back in, and while the new developments give them hope, the former staff members say the animals could be in more danger now than ever before. Those animals deserve so much better, and they will get better now. But former volunteer Jordan Jones hopes that help comes soon, with hundreds of animals still on Tim Stark's property. They are in extreme danger. He has told us for years that he will hurt them, he will shoot them. It's a threat we asked Stark about during our one-on-one -on -one interview. He didn't deny it. And Jones warns the threat could go even farther. It's not just the animals that are in danger, it's all the officials, it's all um, law enforcement that show up. Everyone is in danger and they need to be prepared for what's about to happen. Now, who are the whistleblowers and how's your relationship with them? So the whistleblowers are volunteers and staff members that used to work there or volunteer there and there's anywhere from 10 to 20 of them they are very strong people and no matter if they were anonymous or public every voice counted every story was just as important as the other and i'm so grateful that we had so many people brave enough to step forward i can honestly say that this whole experience brought us closer together through and through um, just because we really had to depend on each other through this. Emotionally, mentally, physically at one point, I know I was hanging on to one of the girls uh, <laughs> outside the courtroom. So um, yeah, my relationship with them is awesome. We're all really tight knit. We communicate effectively. We stick together. We have each other's back. Watch what happens when I get you on the stand. Let's see what happens. Let's see every one of you. You ready? Are you ready for that? 
because we're going to pull you up on the stand and I'm going to show that you're a lying little <laughs> that you are. You wanted to go against. So this was a common question I received and it was, uh, how did you feel when Stark was cussing at you outside the courtroom? Hungry. I was starving. I was ready to go. I was quite irritated that we were held in the courtroom by the sheriffs for a certain amount of time to clear out the rest of the cult members. And then we were released into the hallway and then two seconds later they released him and that's what started the whole cussing in the hall situation. I will say it was very hard to, to sit there and to be composed. Uh, however, we wanted to be professional and we just wanted to let the stupidity shine and that is exactly what had happened. I will say though, I'm very glad that they put my smart out like, uh-huh, in there. I'm ready for that, and I'm gonna show you It slipped, I ain't gonna lie. Like I was trying to hold my composure and, and be professional and uh, I let the, aha uh -huh slip and it still cracks me up to this day because i don't think he heard it but we all heard it in our little circle <laughs> we were we were just over it my favorite part was probably at the end whenever shay was like anything else tim no. anything else tim <laughs> courtroom Throughout the hearing, Stark went on a few rants, mostly pointed at the former wildlife in need volunteers, the same women who came to us with accusations of abuse last year. That's just how Tim is with all of us. And the more outspoken you are, the bigger target you have on your back. Do you think Stark got what he deserved or do you think he should be prosecuted further? I know that some people are under the impression that he is incarcerated and I hate to burst your bubble, but he is not incarcerated. He has not been incarcerated for over a year and he was incarcerated for a contempt of court. He wasn't even incarcerated for animal abuse. So, so the next question is, why didn't you interview for Tiger King 2? So I was offered multiple times to interview and I denied it mainly because my story is not meant for Tiger King at all. Tiger King focuses on drama and just unnecessary baloney that does not pertain to the animals and my story is about the animals so whenever the right resource comes then that's when I will talk about my story. But I was offered interviews, several interviews, several opportunities to be on screen and I declined them all because it's not about fame. It's not about being on TV. I had my moments on TV. I, didn't, I don't need moments on TV. I wanted the focus and the highlight to be on the animals. That's what this whole thing is about. Are you gonna let inspectors on the property? Anything you wanna say? What do you want the community to know? Truth will prevail. Cameras weren't allowed beyond these doors, but inside the courtroom, eyewitnesses describe wrongdoing at wildlife in need. You can't hide forever. We're exposing it right in front of you. Were you ever in fear for your life? I received throughout this whole, throughout the whole thing from late 2019 to hell, probably even today, I have received so many death threats from people I've never met before and who've never met me and don't know anything about me and all this other stuff. With all the death threats and, you know, the threats to find me, to dox me, all this stuff, um, I can honestly say that, no, I've never feared for my life. I have always taken the right safety precautions whenever I'm doing an event or whenever I'm going somewhere, things like that. And I also understand that I know how people are and emotions are heated and I know how that just brings out the worst in people and not to mention I have a pretty big social media presence so if something were to happen the internet's gonna notice <laughs> Next question is, was the courtroom scene real or dramatized? Tim Stark had a lot to say in court today, most of it unsolicited commentary that the judge actually had to ask him to stop. The hearing only lasted about 90 minutes, but there was no shortage of action. Before court even started, extra sheriff's deputies were called into the courtroom after Tim confronted the former volunteers who exposed him. Stark then left the courtroom complaining of chest pain, but he turned down any offers to see a medic. 
After he came back into the courtroom, court started up again with about two dozen wildlife and need supporters taking all of the seats inside, which were limited due to COVID-19. After the proceeding was done, we asked Stark to talk about it on the way out. He had a lot to say, but not to us. Unfortunately, it was real. <laughs> no, it wasn't staged. It wasn't made for TV like that is just how he is. He blew up even before court started. If cameras would have been allowed in the courtroom, you would have seen a thousand times more drama because it was dramatic in there. Former Wildlife and Need volunteer Jordan Jones brought the concerns to us and says now, six months later, as a witness for the state of Indiana, she's seeing results. Nothing has ever really been done about it. The government and just court system in general has always just ignored this, has swept it under the rug, and this is the first time action is actually taking place. Every week, every time we get new news, you know, it's one step closer. It's one step to getting this done and over with, and those animals finally getting to where they belong. I'm expecting justice. I'm expecting the judge to read over everything and see how much evidence we have and that we have had this whole time, and for him to finally see that those animals have to be removed in order for them to stay alive. The next question is, do you ever feel bad for Stark? <laughs> Whenever you've dealt with an abusive person, you know, you tend to focus on the good. So let's say there's 95% bad and then there's that 5% that's good. Your brain tends, or your heart, whatever you want to decide to, one of those organs decides to focus on that 5% rather than the 95%, which is why people kind of get stuck in this loop and it's, it's a horrible situation. Where you naturally just think about the good. And for a while, I did that. Even sometimes to this day, you know, there was a scene, I want to say in episode five, where Shane McAllister was like, I think Stark was just looking for a friend, you know? And you kind of, if you have any empathy, you're kind of like, oh. you know, and even I had a moment of like, Oh, but then I remember all of the horrible things, all of the arguments that I had with him, all of the battles, this whole fiasco, the entire thing, the death threats, the doxing, the still talking about me on Facebook Live. There's like over 15 of us, but Jordan Jones is the worst. <laughs> Jordan Jones is just the most outspoken. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So anytime I find myself thinking about that 5%, I then remember the 95% and I go right back to no. I have no remorse. I do not care. I want him to stay alive. I'm sure, of course. I'll never wish death upon anybody. However, I don't feel bad for him at all. He deserves everything. In fact, he didn't get nearly of everything he deserves. Where are the animals now? So, there's still animals missing. We'll get to that later. But the animals that were there, that were confiscated, are now relocated in USDA licensed facilities. And you can check them out on social media and see how they're doing. Some of them are located at Turpentine or Turpentine. Another group of animals are located at um, a wild animal sanctuary in Colorado. Thank you for watching this video and for asking questions and wanting to learn more about this and about the situation. Um